if a ship was to capsize, they don't just turn turtle quickly. They fill up with water. And for the vessel to turn that quickly so that people would have to hang on to things, uh, not believable. Hi, I'm Captain Wendy Williams. Recently, I was the first Canadian woman to captain a mega cruise ship. Today we'll be looking at cruise ship disasters in movies and TV and deciding how realistic they are. The Titanic disaster is the one that everybody associates with marine disasters. First of all, it struck an iceberg. I'm hoping it would never happen again, but I don't, I never say it will never happen again. We just have a lot more technology and we have um, uh, associations and the ability to track some of the bigger icebergs now. I don't think that the crew of the Titanic were even expecting ice, whereas now it's part of the training. With any incidents on board, there's checklists of things, but there are initial actions for, uh, for something that may involve striking or grounding or hitting another vessel, um, and that is uh, to close all the watertight doors. What they called watertight compartments were not actually watertight, so they actually put doors through what should have been watertight compartments. And what happened was that the vessel progressively flooded. If a ship were to have a strike, there may be uh, the need to, um, to be in a, in a water-filled or water-filling area and have to do exactly what Jack and Rose did. Unfortunately, they got to the top of the stairs and things were locked. That doesn't happen. There are emergency escapes that everybody is, a tr is trained for. You have to hold an emergency drill. I've got you. I won't let go. Is it advisable to go up or down? I mean, the ship is sinking. You're gonna do what you're gonna do. The fright or flight kicks in, and we would be just grappling to find the highest point before uh, succumbing to ha having to be in the water. Some people actually, in, the, in a situation where the ship is not actually sinking, they choose that jumping into the water is the safest method. Um, my view and what I tell everybody and when we're going through training is, you know, your ship is your biggest lifeboat. You don't want to be in one of those little boats unless you absolutely have to. In this case, a lot of people died because they could not be, uh, they could not safely get off the vessel. I think it's like an eight. It was really well done and um, I would imagine that it was a very similar to, to that event. <laughs> I've seen the movie that's food illness. I've never been on a ship where there's been an issue with food. The food and the food preparation, it's very highly regulated. Everybody has to have special food preparation courses. I'm sure it does happen, it just isn't a cause for alarm. Cruise ships have been in the news a lot for something called norovirus. Um, typically the cruise ship does not have norovirus on it. People bring norovirus to the ship. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for tonight. Thank you. There's, there's a guy bringing out uh, an AED that just happens to have one. Crew members would, even though they're trained, they would just be making people comfortable. They wouldn't actually be doing um, solo medical procedures. On a vessel of that size, there would be a dedicated medical crew. Typically, they would carry a doctor and a nurse and have some sort of triage place. Hand grenade. Piracy is a thing. There is, there are pirate attacks of many different types of vessels in the world. Cruise ships are not, um, not exempt from that. I mean, there's all different shapes and sizes of how vessels do navigate through areas where there is a risk of piracy. There are agencies that actually put people on board um, with weapons. There's like barbed wire on deck, charged fire hoses. Um, it's, it, it can get pretty nasty. The Pirates themselves, some of them are equipped with things like rocket launchers and really bad uh, weaponry that can do a lot of damage. Um, I'm assuming the explosion at the stern of the vessel here happened because of one grenade. Uh, I don't think grenade would be able to take down a, a vessel of that size, one of them. Believability here, probably four, five, for how the situations were being handled and the actual attack itself. 
Hospital and laser imaging generating a negative widescreen response, sir. That's impossible. Radios, uh, there are so many backups. And if the radios didn't work, you have satellite phones, all sorts of different types of satellite communication. To be able to scramble a ship like that, uh, no. What's happening here, gentlemen? There's a lot of people on the bridge. I'm not sure what they're all doing. Most cruise companies, not saying all of them, they have different terminology, but we would have what's called green, yellow, and red uh, conditions. Green would be when everything is smooth sailing. Typically, you would have um, you would have a navigation officer up there, you would have an, uh, an assistant or a co-navigator, and you would have one or two lookouts. That would be the bridge composition. Our bridge is uh, like a, a full red condition would be captain, staff captain, uh, chief mate or communicator, uh, two lookouts. That's it, five. Five of you on the bridge handling the situation. Probably just a pot of whale. Moving at 31 knots, sir? I, I don't think so. Where is it coming from? Directly beneath us. This particular cruise ship is equipped with sonar, which <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you would even need that. You wouldn't. So everything is, is scrambled except for the sonar that's picking up some, I guess it's a sea monster in this one. Even though in this particular movie clip um, they're dealing with a, with a, a sea monster, not to put uh, whales or large mammals into a category of being sea monsters, very unfortunately there are whale strikes. Cruise ships pay a lot of attention to uh, give a, a large leave distance and to avoid whales at all costs. Believability from that bridge scene, probably zero. This one looked like Niagara Falls on its side, not a believable wave. A tsunami is biggest when it, it kind of hits the shore. Out at sea, a tsunami might just be a wave like any other wave. So um, the fact that this is a tsunami and not a rogue wave, yeah, probably not that believable. Being that a tsunami wave wouldn't look like that, you wouldn't necessarily navigate a, away from the actual wave, but you would, a, you would navigate away from the area of concern if you could. I do remember seeing this as a kid. I remember the dining room scene and everything uh, going upside down. Are tables and chairs and pianos and things secured? Cruise ships, uh, larger vessels, they have something called a heavy weather or a heavy object register list. And yes, uh, larger or big ticket items that can cause a lot of damage, like a piano could literally go through a wall, a bulkhead. Um, so they are secured. Um, tables and chairs, no, uh, they, they would be movable. And for the vessel to turn that quickly so that people would have to hang on to things, uh, not believable. If a ship was to capsize, they don't just turn turtle quickly, they fill up with water. All right, now what? We're in Shaft Alley. Nowhere is the steel hull thinner. This hull is only one inch thick. Would there be a sustained amount of time that people could have survived inside there? I mean, possibly yes, there would be air pockets. So the likelihood of there being that much air, that much time, highly unlikely. The shaft alley, that's interesting because the shell plating thickness is only one inch. That is probably icebreaker class. Uh, one inch would be exceptionally thick. <laughs> Ship hulls are not that uh, not that thick typically, but in engine spaces, technical spaces, they would be. Um, thickness varies depending on uh, how the ship is built and for what class. I'd probably give it a nine as far as fun movies go. Believability, two, three. The deadly Pandora virus is spreading rapidly. Unprecedented threat requires a worldwide quarantine. A virus? Given that it was created in 2012, the pandemic took everyone by surprise and certainly cruise ships that were already in mid-cruise suddenly were getting uh, cases of, of the virus on board. The Diamond Princess was very unfortunate that she had a lot of cases on board and then was put under quarantine. She was kind of like the worst case scenario. Ships are now being constructed with ventilation such that it's independent in cabins, filtration systems, much like the airline industry did. As we greet a sunny day 12 after virus, today's delicious buffet features fresh seagull and hull scraped barnacles. Would the ship look like that after 12 days? No. 
but uh, in the Simpsons world that's absolutely perfect. Vessels could only be out at sea for as long as their fuel and food supply would allow them to be. We didn't and we wouldn't keep people um, past that point. Cruise ships do carry a lot of food and they carry food in excess of, of what the voyage length would be, but not by that much. So I'd probably give that a nine just because it's actually pretty spot on for having been made almost a decade before our pandemic. No, don't let him drink our... Don't let him drink our torpedo juice. Uh they're in a, a ship's jail or a brig. Ours look a lot different than that. You wouldn't be thrown in there with others. They're holding cells and they are typically a cabin without furniture with a mattress on the ground and they're under camera surveillance and they have a window, a non-break window in a door. Typically they're not in there for very long. It could be just the night before we get to port, but there's a lot of factors before we could actually put somebody in, in a kind of timeout. Whatever the situation is, um, it's to mitigate anybody else getting hurt from their actions or from them harming themselves. This is a big cruise ship. It's got like a big deep sound. It's like a... Yeah, if you're starting the engine, but like we would be hearing a steady... The guy that was doing the kind of like the low... The low boom, boom, boom is probably closest. It depends what kind of propulsion they have. So if they have a big, uh, a big diesel, big diesel engines working, you may have that that guy that was generating that boom, 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 boom sound. It's almost a comforting sound. I find it, I find it comforting. You wouldn't be left alone. <laughs> So that was a little unrealistic. It's kind of a common thread here. Everything on a cruise ship, uh, these, it, it's done with checklists so that we, we don't forget people, we don't forget to uh, sweep areas. It would be part of the security team's protocol to uh, escort them to a muster area. That would not happen. Believability of the jail scene, n not, not believable. This is dealing with the rogue wave. For a long time, people didn't even believe that rogue waves actually existed. It's an anomaly wave that is different from all of the other waves in a certain sea state. And then it could, you know, overturn vessels or come at vessels. I got it! I got it! Come on! Turn. Basically, the tip or the bow has what's called a collision bulkhead and uh, it's very strong construction. You never really want to take anything broadside because uh, even in a small sea, a vessel can get into what's called synchronous, um, a, a synchronicity, which will cause it to become very unstable. The announcements were not appropriate. I, I felt that they caused panic. And then as a captain, you want everybody to know what's happening, but there are ways to word things to make people feel like they are understanding of the situation. This is what's happening, but um, I am in the hands of a very trained crew. And if I follow instruction, I will be safe. And you would have uh, crew members whose duty it would be to do crowd control. Cruise ships have a fantastic stability criteria, they call it, and it would take a hell of a lot to capsize one of these. Is it going to happen as a result of a, you know, the general rogue waves that I've read about? Not, not really. Now, if a cruise ship were to go off vertical, these areas that are not watertight would fill, fill with water causing the capsize. A good example of that we may have seen that maybe people will understand is the Costa Concordia. She went over and she would have kept going over were it not for the depth of water that she was in. That's a little bit of a movie thing. You're not going to really get explosions because explosions would have to do with vapors uh, catching uh, fire somehow or, or igniting and a large amount of vapors in an area causing these random explosions. And on cruise ships, you just don't have that in the accommodation. I can't think of something that would cause those fireballs. Although exciting, very exciting. Believability of what was going on, probably a five, four somewhere in that realm. But fun, fun to watch. Ready? Now. 
for somebody to be able to control the main engines of a vessel, no. You, they're, not, they're not hooked into an automation system that anybody would be able to take over. There, there's automated systems on board, uh, but everything can be done manually. Well, these switches Don't you touch them! They open the ballast doors! You want to flood the ship? There aren't ballast doors. There's watertight doors and there's ballast tanks. Those are the tanks that you can fill with water to uh, change the trim uh, of a vessel. Someone's just taken the wrong term and put it with the wrong equipment. It have to have been going at a very, very fast rate for it to sort of glance off like that. But the amount of speed uh, and the two vessels would have been fairly crumpled. There was a few black marks along the side, not even a crumpled bow. That, that, yeah, not really believable. For the cargo vessel to have an anchor just swinging loose, that wouldn't happen. Ankles, anchors are either stowed or they're deployed. The cargo vessel was not moving and there was no sea to make the anchor swing. Those things weigh, weigh like tons and tons. Believability on a scale of t to 10, maybe three, two, not a lot there uh, meat on the bones for an actual incident. My favorite cruise ship scene from today would have to be Titanic. It's uh, the basis for all the safety um, protocol that we, we do today. And I think the portrayal of uh, what was happening, the severity of the situation was, was very readily understood. If you have enjoyed this today, all you have to do is click the link above and set sail for another one.